did if you, you would like to leave a recording for us yeah. to voice your opinion, then press 1 now. Oh. Otherwise, press 2. Or to speak slowly and clearly. Begin speaking after the beep. Press 1 when you are finished, and then follow the instructions. Now, here is the beep. See, si, hello. I do not like what Howard Stern said. And I think we should hang him naked by press his feet. One to review your message. Okay. Press two to review your message. I don't think they message. got you. Press really? Three to Why would she come on so quickly? Because we have a screwed up phone service. And you know what? You know what happens? Wait a second. Let me just wait. Where's my message? You don't have one. Oh, this sucks. Press one to review your message. I did. Press two to re-record your. See how I have to keep going in queue? Know. And Tom has no problem with this, that this can't be fixed. Press 1 to review your message. <laughs> Press 2 I to keep doing record that. your message. Press 2. Press 3 to cancel. How am I supposed to vote? Speaking after the beep. Press 1 when you are finished, and then follow the instructions. I'm now, talk here is the beep. Right. See? <laughs> I think Howie Stern is a bad person. They should hang him naked by his feet. That's what I think. Press 1 to review your message. Didn't okay. get it. You don't think so? No. Why? How could this be? Because you know what? You're going to have to pick up the receiver. I, I, Tom, Tom is such a Press piece of garbage. This is why I'm getting out of here. Press 2 to re-record your message. All right, I got an idea. Press 3. Begin speaking after the beep. Press 1 when you are finished, and then follow the instructions. Now, here is the beep. See, I think that Howard Stern should be hung naked by his feet for what he has done. Also, I think you should be hung naked by your feet for making money off of a ridiculous topic. Now, press 1. Okay. I think that Howard Stern <laughs> hung naked by his feet for what he has done. Also, I think you should be hung naked by your feet for making money off of a ridiculous topic. <laughs> Thank you. Press 1 to review your message. Press 2 I want to, review to record it again. your message. Press should three. I record it over? You like that one? I like that one. That was Four. a good take. All right. Four. I think that Howard Stern should be hung naked by his feet Put some for what sound he effects. has done. Also, I think you should be hung naked by your feet for making money off of a ridiculous topic. Press 1 to review your message. Press 2 to re-record your message. Press 3 to cancel your message. Or press 4 to send your message as is. Let's press 4. Yes, we're ready to send it. It has been recorded. Thank you for calling our opinion line. All right. We, we left our message. You want to leave a message? <laughs> now, they got to count that. They can't throw that one out. Right. <laughs> well, it's a negative one, though. They're going to send that to the FCC <laughs> for me. What a rip. Man, Dollar ninety eight a minute. Do you think it was rigged so that it doesn't work until like the third time you try it? No, that's our the phone system. Oh. I'm not going to pin that on them. You got to, it's like our phone system, I got to throw it into queue in order to leave a message, and then I got to quickly pop it into air. It's a goof. That could be fixed, but no one around here, everyone says it can't be done until I insist on it, and then it can be done. They always come in, it can't be done. We tried. We tried to fix it, and it can't be done. Yeah, and then I go. Then I blow my stack, and then they go, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, guess what? We got a new phone system. This one works. I called Greg and asked him how to do it. He says it can't be done. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's easier to fly a helicopter than to work that phone. <laughs> Did you ever hear of anything so ridiculous? But everyone argues with me. As soon as I ask for stuff around here, everyone starts throwing their hands up and gets pissed off at me. So they talk to Tom, get the money out of Tom. Yeah, get the money out of Tom. I, no, I don't want to hear that. 
Why do I have to talk to Tom? <laughs> I got four months left anyway. I don't care. You can deal with it for four months. In four months, I don't have to talk to anybody. I'm not talking to Tom ever again. <laughs> what do you think of that? Does me no good talking to Tom. Tom hears this show every day. It doesn't bother. It doesn't phase him in the least. That doesn't bother him. He should be insulted that this, that this equipment sounds like this. But then there are the losers who can't even get into foreign medical schools. They go to chiropractic school, <laughs> which is like learning how to be a, an astrologer. And you're right. They, they also become podiatrists, and there's yeah. some other kind of physician. Well, podiatrists, oh, yeah, there's an ophthalmologist as opposed to an optometrist. Yeah, but there's the Ophthalmologist is an MD, an optometrist. But those no, are still hard. No, ophthalmology is, you know, that's a regular medical yeah. degree. Optometry is still kind of hard. But there's podiatric medicine and then some other kind of medicine that begins with a P. Yeah, I think actually becoming a podiatrist is a little easier than going to medical school. But yeah, that's a spe you know, all you do is deal with the foot. Yeah, who cares if you mess that up? <laughs> <laughs> what, so the guy has a corn. How hard could it be? <laughs> it's just feet. Oh, you study for four years, it's feet. Yeah, they're like, you're so stupid, we're just going to let you work on feet. <laughs> yeah. And what you do is you learn to trim toenails. Yeah. Because <laughs> cause you could work a scissor after four years. <laughs> what? Diagnose a bunion. Yeah. Yep, that's a bunion. It's like, hey, you're not smart enough. To, we're not going to let you go above the ankle. <laughs> Wear looser shoes. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah. And come in and get your toenails trimmed. <laughs> yeah, we're going to trim them professionally and soak them in some salts. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, but... But this woman's upset because I made fun of chiropractor. Now, a chiropractor isn't any different than an astrologer. The other thing, though, is I once went to a, a chiropractor, and he had a special machine yeah. that took uh, pictures. You know, it's like one of those, what are those machines that, uh, the ultraviolet, I guess, who, that tracks heat or something? Yeah, yeah. And he took heat pictures. Right. And he yeah. looked at them, and then, the, the, yes, yes, definitely a lot less energy going into this sector. Yeah, All the yeah, thermal, yeah. Where thermal. Thermal. Black, or yeah. blue, or red, or yeah. yellow. Yes, yes. To, to, to track your energy. <laughs> the oogity boogity -ometer. You know what? The whole <laughs> yeah. You, you spend your whole life with this chiropractic, and each of them do it different. And they all call the other ones quacks. Like exactly. Yeah. It's like religion. Yeah. It's like yeah, his religion is bad. But meanwhile, nobody's gotten to talk to God yet. <laughs> you know, Howard, I went to Dr. Sono too if, if he suggested it. Yeah. But before that, I went to this chiropractor and he said that my spine was slanted. Yeah. So he hooked me up to a machine and, yeah. and, it, and my head was on the strap. <laughs> and it, for 30 minutes, it pulled up my head. For 30 minutes, it, 30 the minutes. strap pulled your head up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he hung you. He told me it was straight my spine up. Yeah. <laughs> to anything, she goes to um, she goes to astrologers. She wastes my money. I go, you know, you're stealing from me. She goes, what are you accusing me of? I go, you steal from me. You steal from me. <laughs> I said, I go out and bust my balls. Uh, doing real work. Doing real work. Real money in a real competitive market, <laughs> and I get a paycheck, and I got to fight for that paycheck. Believe me. But it's real stuff. And you take my money, and you give it to someone who's going to tell your future? I tell you what, I'll tell your future. Get out of my house. <laughs> you will be living somewhere else. I'm going to go tell a judge that you steal my money. <laughs> this is a shakedown. One day she got confused. She, she had an appointment back-to-back -back with um, the chiropractor and the astrologer. She walks out of the astrologer office, office and she goes, Oh, my back feels better. <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> In conclusion, your show reaches so many people. Please, I implore you, do not bash this wonderful profession. <laughs> I am not asking that you endorse the profession, but please do not tear them down. They help so many people, and they do not deserve to be portrayed as monkeys in white coats. <laughs> That's what I said. They could put a monkey in that white coat if people would just have faith in it. <laughs> don't write me that you don't like my comments on chiropractors, because it'll only get me riled up again, and I'll keep making the same comments. It is a, it is a quackery. <laughs> it is charlatanism. 
They don't even know. They, they, the chiropractors themselves don't know it's quackery. They believe in it. So it's not like they're evil people. It's just they don't realize that it's nothing. It's just another one of these placebos. And it's a complete waste of time. And you know what? You shouldn't even make them go to chiropractic school. They should be allowed to just practice. Is chiropractic school four years? Yeah, something like that. To but learn all those wacky machines? Evidently, her son needed four years. <laughs> to put your, your, you in the neck stretching machine yeah. and the, get that camera that does the thermo uh, study. I went to one chiropractor. This guy used to just point his finger at the spots Uh huh. and then go like this. He would snap his finger on the spot. Is that right? Yeah, he would go to each spot. He'd go, where did it hurt? I go, and he'd go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in Africa I said, why don't you just say Africa Dabra? And hit me with I the swear wand. to God. He'd go. <laughs> All right. And he went, I said, let me see what you're doing. He goes, no, 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 don't look. Because they don't want you to look. The guy snapped. He goes. <laughs> and then they went up to my neck. I'm like. Oh, man. <laughs> Clicking in your ears. Sing that <laughs> <laughs> why did you just say, why did you just say, don't even show up to send your check? Yeah, right. And I am and I went like 10 Put times. Put phone on your back. And I went like 10 times. <laughs> like an idiot. And I was like, you know, I think I feel a little better. When I, when I get in the car, I feel better. You can't tell. Yeah, I can't tell. Your wallet's <laughs> yeah, My wallet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it's like, I think like it's 10 minutes of courses at chiropractic school and then three and a half years of teaching how to bill your uh, patients. <laughs> Not too much. Fill out forms. You fill out forms and bill and try to get it through medical insurance. Don't overdo it. <laughs> don't overdo it. Yeah, you if you know. get too greedy. Wreck it for everybody. All right. <laughs> Wreck it for everybody. <laughs> Got to know more. They had to get a secret handshake. That's right. Ah. <laughs> Pick out two. <laughs> chiropractic. <laughs> What a goof. It's, I'm sorry if you're a chiropractor. You spent four years, you know, <laughs> eight years in school developing this, but it's just a goof. And deep down inside, I think you know it, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think somewhere in the bottom of your heart, you know. But you got to do what you got to do, I guess. Look, there are people looking for answers, so you might as well rip them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> might as well be you. Yeah. Just stay in a state of denial. I think you're helping somebody. I'm sure. You know, we don't know everything. Maybe there's some out there who right. do help. Yeah, that's just my opinion. <laughs> okay. I've yet to, I've paid the top ones. I don't know. <laughs> I've yet to find one that works. All right. Let's take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Hey. 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 I'm your one. I am Jackie the Joke Man. Hey. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> You're Jackie. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ow, ow. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ah. Jackie Puppet has a rubber oh, penis oh. coming out of his pants. <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than you, though. <laughs> Step up to the mic. Step up to the mic. I don't even think Robin saw that. <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> that long. Little stinger. <laughs> Tweety weeny. Actual size. Jesus. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Hey. Jackie, you're going to get sunburned again. <laughs> Take that thing out of there. How can you use that on the E show? Come on, yeah. Billy. Pixels. <laughs> yeah, pixelated. <laughs> little pixels. A little pixel, a little dot. <laughs> anyway, we've gotten a lot of phone calls from chiropractors who are agreeing with us. Well, now, how can we say that? I mean, we could make that up. We haven't actually had any of them come on the air. I said to Baba Boy, why don't you put him through? He goes, oh, I, I thought you'd only want ones that disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I go, come on, if a chiropractor agrees with me, yeah, that's isn't great. Yeah, that revolutionary? He has no clue. He's out there working my phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So before yesterday's game, owner Marge Schott rubbed dog hair from the team's dead former mascot, Shotzi, on her players and coaches for good luck. <laughs> she's, a, she's a prince. Princess. 
Mr. Shot, did you really do that? <laughs> Line up. Line up, you niggas. I'm going to rub dead dog hair on you. It's for good luck. It works every time. Next time, I'll throw some cow crap in your soup. Booga <laughs> <laughs> booga. Let's go win that game. Booga <laughs> booga. You grubby niggas, lazy niggas, if you don't start playing, I'll dump you in your head. They I'm did win. Power. Did you do this because you hate black people and you thought that maybe like as a, you, you present yourself as a witch doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I eat bags of powdered <laughs> root and chicken bones. Uh, dog hair. Dog hair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now win for me, you grubby niggas. Win. Oh, oh my God. She did call the blacks niggas, according to somebody. Who, 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 uh, who, it was who, some disgruntled who, employee, Jackie wasn't Mall. it? Jackie Marlow, I think. <laughs> Damn Puerto Ricans. Busy playing those bongos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even so have rub, on my team, So though. you rub dog hair in, into the players? Dead dog hair. Dead dog hair into the coach and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the players, huh? And they had to stand there and let it happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dockies. I'll smack you over your hard heads with shovels, even if you win. So did it help? Did they win? I don't know. I fell yes. asleep. I... <laughs> they beat the Mets 13 to 11. You After beat the mother, the mother teams. The mothers. <laughs> them. Them. The mother coloreds. <laughs> All right. Very good, Mr. Shaw. I love coloreds. <laughs> <laughs> them. Ooga booga. Ooga booga. <laughs> dog well, hair. Well, will you be doing this again? Will you gotta this go down to the ritual? pound and get some more dead dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna rub into your players more dead dog hair? I paid big money for them dead dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you... I got some cat vomit to pour on my <laughs> niggas for good luck. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Stand still, you niggas. Stop boogalooing. Stop your boogalooing and let me pour this cat vomit on you. Never mind your uniforms. <laughs> they stink, them uniforms. All right, good. All right, Mr. Shot. Win Schott. the game. <laughs> Mr. Shot wants win to win the game. game. <laughs> Get out there and win. Right. There you go. All right, yeah, very good. Folks. Take big money for you, Dackies. You better run. Hustle, hustle. <laughs> hustle up. Put a little pepper on that ball. <laughs> All right, good for you, Mrs. Shaw. Them niggas lose, I'll boil them like missionaries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she knows how to boil them. You gotta say that. Well, you were. Uh, Cincinnati recipe. <laughs> they called you a racist, I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, we. Well, she really wants a winning team. Listen, she did pay a lot of money for the team, but it's not right for her to call the players. Uh, to right. rub a dead dog's fur on, on people. And the players stood there and liked it? Sure. Yeah? I want them to win. Right. We're going to get some more dead dogs, though. All right. I You're love, running out of hair? I love this. Hey I ran out of hair. <laughs> what else could you... What else could you... I ran out of... I'll use dog anus. <laughs> rub it on the players? Yeah, what else could you rub on the players? And they'll stand there and they'll love it because i'm the owner right i'm the owner of that team did any of the players refuse robin <laughs> it sounds like nobody did the managers right. the players they all stood there so no she came down. they realized they eat chitlins and knuckles they don't mind a little friggin dead dog hair <laughs> <laughs> eat that dog hair <laughs> all right all right very good monkey cheese in their tongues <laughs> <laughs> when I tried everything else with yous. <laughs> you people. Don't let me down. Don't let down Mama Shot. You uh, grubby niggas, you uh, flat bastards. Win. Win. You didn't mean any disrespect by that. No, no, no of course not. No, you don't mean you're not a racist, are you? No. Right. I'll chain you up and make you dig ditches. <laughs> <laughs> From Kentucky to Cincinnati. <laughs> All right. Chang gang. All right. Win. <laughs> Niggas. <laughs> All of you win. 
All right, let's go. <laughs> We've done All enough. Right, very good. <laughs> what did you rub on the tongue? Monkey cheese? Monkey cheese. Uh-huh. Any animals. Anything I All can right, find. All right, good. Okay. Birds, frogs. <laughs> what are you, a witch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And obviously, it's not the real Mr. Shot. I can't imagine that it is. All right, to an imposter. All right. Uh, it's the Howard Stern Show. Here's Howard. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Is that your contribution? I'd like to add to the songs. <laughs> it wasn't good without you. Hey, the meat puppets say everything's an instrument. <laughs> they would. I have about three different flutes on me. One man band. That's right. The wind section. <laughs> yeah, I'm a one man wind section. Okay. E e e e to listen to that. e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e that, that, that oh. kind of that kind of gets old after a little while. I can't believe he really makes those noises. D How you doing, cousins? A, a grown a man. Mm. I wouldn't mind if it was funny. <laughs> I got a little story from the Grease Palace here. It's, uh, this guy gets no ratings. Zero rating. He's good. Our general manager thinks he's funny. <laughs> Good. He's good. <laughs> Our general manager thinks he's funny, though. He's the one who brought him to the company. Oh, he always said, "Good Grease move, man, Tom. Very funny. You're yeah. funny. Grease man is funny." Tom. Tom is easily amused. <laughs> e Tom. Yeah, I'm gonna make Tom laugh. E Tom's rolling on the floor. <laughs> and then I went to, to my wife and I told her take the job at seventy. She. Does Tom still think he's funny? Yeah. Or has he gotten it now? Tom's amused by his own golf bag. <laughs> I used to sit there listen to, oh, I'm bringing him in because he's funny. I go, yeah, you know, you're bringing him in because you're going to try and teach me a lesson. But the lesson's going to backfire on you. I was down in Washington listening to the Grease Man. Yeah, he's I tell funny. you, boy, he's funny. Yeah, okay, bring him to New York. Let's see if he's funny. <laughs> Me! They put him on at 10 o'clock at night so that, that uh, he wouldn't be competing with anything but records. And he's still not funny. Yeah. Hello, this is the Grease Man. Who's this? Hi, Grease. This is Amy from Long Island. Hello, Daddy. How are you today? I'm okay, Grease. What about you? Well, I'll tell you something. I want to tell you a little story about when I was a caddy for general manager Tom Chiasundo. <laughs> that was a funny story, Grease. Yeah. 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 Dick. Everyone's teaching me lessons here. Yeah, we'll put the grease man on in Atlanta. Hey, I'm the grease man in Atlanta. I haven't been, I haven't been good a, a, a good team player. I'm the one who introduced syndication to this company and, cook, and took them dragging and kicking into it. Fought me every step of the way. Told me I couldn't be on in California. It would be bad for my career. <laughs> yeah, it was real bad. Uh, man, so I guess I'm being taught a lesson for being such a bad man for the company. I've been horrible for this company. I've only brought them, I've kicked them, and I, I brought them kicking and screaming into the 20th century. Tom, I heard the grease, I went down to Washington and heard the grease, boy, he's good. Now, I'm not saying he's not as, you know, that you're not as funny, but... Oh, no, no, no. He was, a, you're funny, but he's funny, too. Right. What a <laughs> dick. Boy, he really, you know, I'd love to see Tom start his own radio company and have to start picking talent and putting money into talent. I'd love to see what he comes up with. Talk about a no-brain. 
Ever okay. since that day he said it to me, I knew he had not a brain in his head. That's why I wonder why he comes in sometimes to say, now that was really funny. Yeah, because you know he doesn't know anyway if it's funny or not. I only think he thinks the grease man's so funny. Whenever he tells me something's funny, that's when I head for the hills. I know I did a bad show. <laughs> Right, never do it again. As soon as he comes in, I go, that's it, boys. You We're not doing it that off again. The list. That's it. <laughs> I said, Jackie keeps the list over there with Fred. I say, <laughs> cross it off the list. The kiss of Tom. Tom. Yeah. The kiss of death is kiss of Tom. That was funny. Yeah. Priest man is Tom's Edsel. <laughs> hey, Tom, thanks for all of Infinity's millions of dollars and uh, <laughs> no ratings in return, sucker. <laughs> And they keep they keep supporting him. Put him on in Atlanta. Don't put Howard on. Put a, put a grease man. They okay. keep thinking they'll find a market he's funny in. Well, they said to me, <laughs> this was two years ago, they said to me, well, we don't know if you're going to stay with the company. I go, well, what are you saying? I got two years left on a contract. How about putting me on? Well, we don't know that you're going to stay with the company. Well, how do you know the grease man's going to stay with the company? How do you know anyone's going to stay mm -hmm. with it? Well, is, uh, well, they know the grease man's going to stay. And I used to say to them, I'd stay with the company if you, if you didn't play such damn-ass games with me. But what kind of company is going to play games every minute with a game? Just, you know, why does it have to be a game? Why do I always have to be punished? Why don't you go punish that imbecile Imus? I mean, you know, what are you, why are you punishing me? What did I do except, except get you into the syndication business? Hmm. Dicks. They don't try to... Everyone treats me like I'm a cockroach. Well, I gotta say something. I'm no cockroach. <laughs> you have no cockroaches. Yeah. Hey, you're no cockroach. Hey, I live amongst cockroaches. <laughs> but I am no cockroach. Hmm. Well, obviously, this will just be an excerpt from this long, long, long article. It's an article on Robin's life, yes. It's a Robin long article. Robin was obviously on the run and could only give the girl eight or nine pages worth of interview. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, don't get upset because I got a lot of... Uh, Ink. <laughs> hey, what about me? I'm just as good as Robin. You didn't, let, you didn't let me do my reading at your party. I was very upset. Yeah, what happened with that? I was First prepared. of all, who even knew whether you were there? I was there. I didn't see you till I was leaving. Jackie so goes, oh, you know, I had a whole different head. I thought I was going to do it. I was getting prepared. It's all ready to go. And you could have so told insulting. me you were around. Oh, yes, yes. If I could have got through the prize fighters. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had them, man. Keep be giving artistic license. <laughs> go ahead. One of the reasons I wrote the book is because this mythology had developed around me that I was more than human, <laughs> says Quivers. I like it better when you read, uh, start again, but read, you know, in the more, you start out kind of sedate. Yeah. And then you... And then you build. Yeah, you're yeah. building too quick. You're, you're nervous. You're shooting your Who's doing this? Come on. Start again. Uh, I think it, it was the mythology thing. Yeah, he got all excited. Got Go ahead. <laughs> Go on. Come on, I, I'm the producer of you. Go ahead. <laughs> Snipping my creative nut. All right, I'm sorry. Oh. Just start again. One was my music. Oh, hold on. I thought, I thought, I thought it was <laughs> my music. I thought I might be throwing. I was you. doing so well. Mm. One of the reasons I wrote the book <laughs> is because this mythology had developed around me. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> this I was more than human, <laughs> says Quivers, who strode through the lobby of... The, who strode through the hotel lobby, bigger, bubblier, and much larger than she ever seems when trapped within the speakers of a car radio. What mythology had oh. developed about you, Robin? I think people had this impression that, more that than I human? came from... The whole book. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. All right, let's let, let check. It's a continue. different kind of background. It's, be <clears throat> it's because of my bearing and my demeanor, and because I'm really, really a good observer of people. I could pick them apart, figure them out, without a lot of information. Unfortunately, they didn't have any ammo... To come back at me. <laughs> She's All a they knew was Robin's perfect. <laughs> oh. So this made me more human, and I think it's made them very happy. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about Jackie. <laughs> For her, the world is full of people 
constantly making overtures about various things, but time being what it is, <laughs> I have to turn down a lot of things that are offered to me. <laughs> the book, on the other hand, was something she couldn't turn down. Brace yourself for this one. <sighs> <laughs> didn't do it for therapy for me. I did it for therapy for others. <laughs> she says in the loudest, most resonant voice in the entire restaurant, perhaps in the entire hotel. <laughs> Robin does like to be heard. <laughs> doesn't care who's listening. I'm Why she broadcasting all the time? <laughs> yeah. oh, I didn't write that book. To figure out where I had been, I had already figured that out. <laughs> I stay in my own little world, and nobody really bothers me, <laughs> says Quivers with a confrontational smirk. <laughs> I refuse to be dictated to by them. <laughs> there was no rule book handed to me when I was born that said how to be a black female. If there was supposed to be one, they forgot to give it to me. So I'm doing my own thing. Very nice. Thank Thank you very nice. Nice. <laughs> nice read. Wow. Good for you, Rob. What a gold mine. What a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Jackie. That's from the article. Wow. Robin Quivers, proud to be made of sterner stuff. There you go. <laughs> good for you, Robin. Congratulations on another great article. <laughs> How did I even know you were there? <laughs> I like the first two. To the first two sentences are the most unbelievable sentences I've ever heard. Well, you know what it was all about. It truly is about Jackie that I I'm see. talking. They asked me, uh, you know, they said to me, it seems that the guys on the radio show are having a great great time the them hold on hold on here it is of some of the things in the book the them to which she refers is the crew at the howard stern show where happy is an understatement mm -hmm. as far as the book is concerned since its release stern and the gang have erupted into euphoria over the <laughs> chance after years of being held hostage to her razor sharp tongue to rib quivers there you go <laughs> that's what it was about it wasn't about Very the good. world in general it was about jack well, on I the see. show jackie <laughs> martling is Jack, you gonna read the whole article? No oh, offense. Oh, I got so. the mic. about me, you bastard. <laughs> You did a good reading. Now, now, no one to stop. He always goes too long you know, and bores everyone. I just everyone. had to put it in context. Right. It was all about Jackie. Whatever. Yeah. Nobody else is enjoying this, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as you. <laughs> So anyway, John John had about seven questions to ask Billy Crystal. First one was kind of like a nice question. That's the way we worked it. Second question, you can tell he doesn't like it all because it's about that Mr. Saturday Night. Right. Remember? That big flop. The huge movie that he was going to put out with that character about old comedi old Jewish comedians. Yeah. Which was one of the most anti-Semitic films I've ever seen. Because so once you great. watch it, you hated Jews. With incredible makeup. And it, was every, it was every stereotype about Jews that Hitler tried to uh, pass off. Uh, so, but Billy, I don't know what he was thinking when he did that. And then, of course, I mean, the movie was so bad, people used to beat up Jews in the lobby of the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like, oh, Jews. <laughs> and then we asked him a question about, uh, you know, about cheating on his wife, which he doesn't do, which was, you know, it's a joke. How do you? Know what he does but we don't know well well listen to here here he is stuttering john and billy crystal <laughs> hi billy can we ask a question please right. I'll see you how are you Good. big you fan who are you paul how's it going from where from xrk okay. um are you glad that you're the only guy who can handle the oscars I am not the only guy who can handle the Oscars. Well, David didn't do as good job as you, but... David did great. I love what David did on the show. He was terrific. See, that's a nice kiss-ass question. Uh, but he listened to him. David yeah. was great. I love what he did on the right. show. Right. You know, meanwhile, he's like, yeah, I'm much better sure. than David Letterman. Stock answer. Stock answer. But that's great. He's, he's digging it. Okay. Will there be a Mr. Saturday Night, too? Yes, there will. 
<laughs> oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how many years were you married before you cheated on your wife? <laughs> So you can take this to Howard, right? And you can shove this right up Howard's stupid ass, okay? Well, you don't like Howard anymore, Bill? No, because Howard dumps on me all the time, and, you know, it's just not fun when you got a thing like this, okay? And now you'll do this on a show, and you'll all laugh and have a good time, but it's not fun, you know? Well, well, Billy, well, we're all big fans of yours. <laughs> I, really, I'm a big fan of yours. Then you don't come in and sell stuff. Yeah. He's, he's lecturing like Alan King. <laughs> Mm. And you don't come mm. with uh, insulting questions. He's like Jerry Lewis now. Well, I think we got what we needed. <laughs> He's 85 years old. <laughs> well, pretty soon we get th we'll get thrown out. Billy <laughs> <laughs> really found everybody to throw me out. Wow. That's great. <laughs> you knew you were over that at that, that moment. Was it. Done. <laughs> Boy, if this, if this movie bombs, oh, Billy's good. Then we're really going to make oh, fun of him. Man. <laughs> now you're going to take this back to Howard because Howard makes fun of me. But, you know, what have you been saying? Have know. you dumped on Billy? <laughs> yeah, well, you did dump on <laughs> I mean, Mr. Saturday Howard. Night was not funny. I was the only guy who dumped on, on Mr. Saturday most Night. Most people dumped on it by just not going to see it, I suppose. <laughs> I just said it was the most. I said Hitler could have done. Hitler couldn't have done a better job. I got to hear that one again, if you don't mind. <laughs> that was a good you one. Yourself. I like being yelled at through John. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't tell you. He grabs the mic. Yeah. He grabs the mic as he as he as he curses and stuff, and then he grabs my questions and walks away with them. He took the questions. Yeah, he took the questions. Wait till he reads the other <laughs> one. Oh man, he got all the questions. Yeah, I have. Hey, I, have I have a new one. <laughs> yeah, here's the rest of them. Wait a minute, I don't understand. Did he put his hand over the mic? No, no, he pulled it so when he was doing his rant, I wouldn't pull it away from him. Oh. Oh, oh we wouldn't pull it away. No, I wouldn't pull it away at all. But and then and then he grabbed the uh, question and, and then told everyone to throw me out. <laughs> Let's see. The next question was. Oh, the next one was all right. Why can't Martin Short get arrested? <laughs> O.J. guilty or innocent? How do you h answer the rumors that you wear a hairpiece? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. There was a bunch of them. So he's sitting at home <laughs> reading these. <laughs> yeah, maybe he wants to call in with his other answers. <laughs> he's now ready for the... Uh, hi, Billy. <laughs> Can your question, please? <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. How are you? Good. Big you fan. Who are you? Paul. How's it going? From where? From XRK. Um, are you Wait glad that you? <laughs> Did he, he recognized you? Didn't he? But I, I don't think so. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to say you Wait, know. Wait, such a stupid question. Who are you? He must have known. He didn't ask any of the other reporters that. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, see, so got him saying like I, he was like he wasn't doing any more interviews. So I went and to around the corner and got him when he was like just hanging out. <laughs> Who are so, you? Yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. Um, are you glad that you're the only guy who can handle the Oscars? I'm not the only guy who can handle the Oscars. Well, David didn't do as good job as you, but... David did great. I love what David did on the show. He was terrific. Okay, uh, will there be a Mr. Saturday Night too? This is the one that... Yes, there will. That's the one that pissed yeah. him off, not the wife question. That's yeah. when his face changes. He's already, he's angry and, and just building up steam as John goes on to the next question. The, the movie made $12. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's not a real and, he was, and when you go to see that movie, it's like, directed by Mr. William Crystal. <laughs> Written by Mr. William Crystal and Babalu Mandel. <laughs> Produced by, by Mr. William Crystal. Dr. It's <laughs> Dr. William Crystal. It's good I didn't ask the other way that, that you'd wanted me to ask it. What was I, did, uh... You know, you know. Do you think it would have closed on Saturday? What was it? No, no. It was. It was. Just, isn't it ironic that Mr. Saturday Night closed Saturday afternoon? <laughs> oh, man. You wanted to be nicer about it. Yeah, I was trying to be kind. I was going to say, "Hey, will there be a Saturday Night too?" Okay. Will there be a Mr. Saturday Night too? Yes, there will. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how many years were you married before you cheated on your wife? <laughs> So you can take this to Howard, right? <laughs> and you can shove this right up Howard's stupid <laughs> ass, okay? Uh, you don't like Howard anymore, Bill? No, because Howard dumps on me all the time, and, you know, it's just not fun when you got a thing like this, okay? When is it fun? And now you'll do this on a show, and you'll all laugh and have a good time, but it's not fun. <laughs> it you know? is funny. It's, funny. it's, it's not fun, fan. but it is funny. It's funny. Comedy has rules. Yeah. You know what? He's when is just it funny? like one of those newscasters who gets a call in the midst of a yeah, tragedy. He's lecturing. This is not the time. This is not the time. I mean, come on. It's a movie premiere. This is the time. You know how they always say we're not supposed to do that during
during like when you know dur during uh, uh, an explosion yeah. or something. <laughs> this is the time. It's a when movie open. When is the time, the time to there insult is him? No time. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not funny to him, it's fine. Yeah. When it's not funny to Billy Crystal, you know it's funny. <laughs> you know? Well, Billy, well, we're all big fans of yours. Okay, right. No, so I, really, I'm a big fan of yours. Good. Then you don't come in and sell stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh, <laughs> what happened to him? <laughs> Really well, I think silly. we got what we need. Forget Paris must be some comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of self-effacing humor. Forget comedy. Yeah. yeah. Forget show business. <laughs> Forget well, humor. Well, you know, uh, Deborah Wing is <laughs> the love interest in there, you know. Oh, yeah? yeah. Wouldn't you pick a better love interest? <laughs> if you get to make out with any... Wait, you see, I'm going to get me a good love interest in my movie. Well, uh, Deborah Winger's funny. Yeah, but she's... I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah she, she makes a lot of people laugh. <laughs> Isn't she like 55 now? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get all that? Did you get all that? Well, pretty soon we get th we'll get thrown out. So here's Alec Baldwin, who's a friend yeah. of the oh, show. Oh, so you got another person. Yeah, now Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, Baldwin who's known, Alec Baldwin, who's known for serious roles, actually has a sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> and he didn't want to talk to anybody, but because I I, I, I was chasing him, I said, hey, it's for Howard, and then he stopped. Oh, okay. I had to, but... Nice. Alec, I have a question for XRK. Okay? We got to run. I'm sorry. Really, Alec? Howard Stern, man. How are you starting, huh? Me. Was it you? Oh, oh, my God. How are you doing? Good. What's how you happening? Doing, right? All right, man. How, how you was the that? movie, right? It was excellent. It was really good. It was yeah. really good. Funny. Uh, he's got to say that. Uh, I love Billy's What is he going to say? Really right, let me just ask you a couple questions. Howard wants to know, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> Genital-wise, who's, who's the biggest bald one? Uh, my brother, Daniel. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Very how honest. How big is that? Uh, all right, well, let's not go into details. Just yes or no questions. How do you answer charges that you and Kim Bassett are difficult to work with? Uh, this bull <laughs> All right. Let's make them short answers. Here we go. Come on. Okay, okay. Uh, do you ever play uh, Babongo with Kim? Uh, constantly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're in the same town. Next. <laughs> Can I smell your fingers? <laughs> take, we'll see you then. take care, Alec. We'll see you. Man. What do you say? Take it easy? Take care, yeah. <laughs> I smell your fingers. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know she's pregnant. Yeah. My baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Jackie Puppets, baby. Yeah. Right, Jackie Puppet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, you got Kim Bassinger pregnant, didn't you? Yeah, with this. <laughs> Put that away. It was good. <laughs> She's got big lips everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my stunger. All right, what? very good. <laughs> Someone attached the big rubber penis to uh Where'd the that come one. from? Actually, it's a little baby penis. <laughs> it's perfect for it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> it looks like a big finger. I know. Out of his penis. Keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take your eyes off it. <laughs> you are now in my pocket. <laughs> what? You are in my pocket. He's going to hypnotize me. <laughs> <laughs> tell the truth. I had another book and tell the truth. The Jackie puppet is waving what's in his pants in front of Robin and hypnotizing him. All right, very good. Shuddering John, once again, uh, you uh, made a lot for. You really are a big Billy Crystal fan. I, I know that uh, you're upset. Well, I, I like. City. So what? What's he going to do for you? Know, I love sli uh, City Slickers and then when Harry met Sally. I mean, you know. did you like City Slickers too? I didn't see it. Did you like Mr. Saturday Night? I didn't see that either. All right, so there you go. You're such a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> big fan likes those movies. Yeah, big fan who goes to see everything. Yeah. Really does. You're not funny. John, like you're not me. funny. That's like when Fred Gwynn yelled at you. You're not <laughs> funny. <laughs> Thurman Munster yelled at John. Pretend I didn't hear that, John. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that, John. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Crystal, mirth maker. Okay. Do we really goof on him that much? Well, you know what? I imagine that there must be a lot of pressure coming off of uh, Mr. City Saturday Slickers, yeah. too, and, yeah. Sa and Mr. Saturday Night to have this be funny. Yeah. And that's probably what was going through his mind at that time, that he didn't need this Fair enough. silliness as he was going into this film. Well, he's a very important figure in show business, and 
you know. There's a lot riding on this right. album. His career is very important. <laughs> Much more important than mine. <laughs> but because we pissed him off, we right. missed, you know, Regis. And I really want to get the first question to Regis. <laughs> oh, what is the first question to Regis that you had? Oh, uh, I forget. Uh, it's the best one. It's, oh, if Kathy Lee sucks, say what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the question. Uh, well, do it again. I didn't if get Kathy it. If Kathy Lee sucks, say what? Yeah. <laughs> if Kathy Lee sucks, say what? <laughs> if Kathy Lee sucks, say what? <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Well, you had you ran that by me so fast, I didn't get it. You were supposed to say what? Yeah, he'll yeah. say what, and then you go, oh, she go, does. If Kathy Lee sucks, say what? And then he was going to go, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he was with his wife, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and question number three was, do you still beat your wife? That would have been, <laughs> been real tough. Yeah. <laughs> like that, Billy, so don't... you didn't get him? Because no, because Billy were... got all the security guards to throw me out. Oh, he oh. did? Yeah, he went and could get this guy out of here. Oh, really? really? Oh, what a dick. Yeah, so he is like... a dick. Yeah, so. He's such a wimp. I know his brother. His brother's a nice guy. Rip. He became Rip when he went out to Hollywood. Rip. <laughs> the guy's Rip name's, Crystal. The guy's name's Rick, but he became Rip. Rip Crystal. <laughs> we hear from him once in a while. We yeah, haven't heard from him in a long time. Yeah. Rip Crystal. The Ripster. Rip. The Rip Master General. <laughs> and he looks just like Billy. <laughs> yeah. He's better looking than Billy. Is he a movie star, too? Or? Yeah, sure. They're all movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the crystals. But, uh... I even think it's funny the name he chose for himself, Crystal. I mean, or his, or his father, cho you know, chose. Oh yeah, who do? What's his real name? name? No, I'm just saying it. It's obviously not Crystal. They're Jews. It, it was of, Abramowitz. Yeah, how many Jews do you know of Crystal? You know <laughs> what I mean? Abramowitz. Yeah. <laughs> you should have said, "Will there be a Mister like Friday night?" <laughs> <laughs> Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Thursday afternoon. Oh, I get it. You're going to take the tape and give it to Howard and play it and laugh. And <laughs> You're all going to laugh, but this is not fun. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was funny. <laughs> You know. you know, but you know his predictions were very good. <laughs> yeah. He should go into psychic. Reading. I bet you, I bet you that tape's a lot funnier than the movie. Oh yeah. And you're all gonna laugh about it tomorrow. Yeah. He should be on the psychic network. He knew exactly what was gonna happen. And you're all gonna make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the future. So the future. <laughs> he must have consulted the eight ball. I told you, man cow, my name is Man Cox, <laughs> and I'm going to get you. You're going down, douche. Get out of Chicago now. You're gone. You're history. You and Kevin. And Chicago loves us because we're from Chicago. You're not from Chicago. Man Cox is here to beat Man Cow. As far as we can tell, turd. He, he was last in San Francisco. Yeah, he? he never got ratings in San Francisco. <laughs> Man Cox is here, your hero, the boy you ripped everything off from. He goes, quote, we are under attack. This is from uh, Robert Feeder's column. We are under attack and need to be aggressive. Mueller wrote in a letter to his station's general manager, Mike Fowler. Yeah, good luck. You work for Evergreen. <laughs> They're really going to care what happens to you. I think the sloth-like pace of promotion staffers and Dave Richards is a serious detriment to the success of the station as a whole. Oh, like he cares about the rest of the station. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't realize that uh, this was going to be as big as it turned out, meaning me. That's what they mean. Oh, yeah. Well, he did a promotion and a few hundred people showed up. And the station couldn't handle it. And he thinks they should have handled it better. But you know what it's all about, don't you? He thinks he should be on buses and stuff. Sure. They're not doing a bang-up job of making sure everybody remembers that Man Cow is in town. Man Cow, you're a Howard Stern impersonator. And now Howard Stern is in Chicago. And you're a dick. <laughs> and they now see that you're a dick. 
and you're doing all my old bits. You and turd. You're both turds. Don't kid yourself. Don't call him turd. You're turd. You're man turd. And I'm man cox. And man cox always beats man turd. <laughs> man cow. Why don't you just call yourself Cousin Brucey? If you're looking for a goofy name. Stupid dick. All these guys with their goofy names. At least Kevin calls himself Kevin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Man Cow was probably thinking ahead. You know, he said, this might not work. And rather than being known as the idiot who failed, I'll be Man Cow. Yeah, Man Cow. <laughs> well, I'm Man Cox. <laughs> That's a dirtier name. That's C-O-X. <laughs> don't, don't misspell it. In Chicago, I want to be called Man Cox. And I want all the newspaper reporters to call me Man Cox. And what is your name again, Robin? Turd? Uh, no, Captain Cocor. Oh, remember. Captain Cocor, right. I forgot. Turd. <laughs> Doing every bit I've ever done in the history of radio. And he, he's trying to convince someone he developed all this stuff. I love guys like that. He's going to have a really tough time. Yeah. Uh, douche. Got fired from San Francisco because of low ratings. <laughs> Howard, I have to bring you some important information. You know, it's our duty when we discover uh, new ways. Would this information have anything to do where Lisa is staying in what hotel? No. Oh. Well, then that's information I don't It need. has something to do with what you might try in order to uh, soothe your longing for her. Go ahead. What is it? I would love to. <laughs> yes. A 16-year-old boy in mm. Knoxville, Tennessee. L lead me to him. <laughs> was found dead in his bedroom. Oh. Uh-oh. What did he do? Did he have a plastic savanna vagina? Described as a gruesome, horrifying death. This is something I'm thinking that you could eventually fall into. Autoerotic asphyxiation? With your craziness. No. This is all new. We've talked about autoerotic asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. Can you imagine before. you're like a parent and you're, you come home, let's say from work. Your kid's one of those latchkey kids who lets himself in. Come home, you open up like a closet, and your kid rolls out. He's got... A rope tied around his neck and to his feet <laughs> because he was ch and he's naked. <laughs> this he was is worse. <laughs> this is a worse story than that. What did he do? Because this kid's parents were on vacation and they got a call from <laughs> firefighters and police officers who discovered this young man. They were called to the scene on Monday morning by a neighbor who smelled something burning. When the firemen found the remains of a teenager, they called the police in to investigate and from the looks of things at first they thought the boy had been tortured by some satanic cult hmm. however upon further investigation they discovered a bunch of pornographic magazines under his mattress okay one of the magazines was called Ovo Ovid Now O-V-I-D Now Ovid I Now I don't know what that means I do but go ahead and it described a sexual toy that could be made from the fresh heart of a cow, a simple electrical circuit, and some batteries. Oh, he, he burned himself up. So what happened to this young man was they found him lying in his bedroom with a cow's heart wrapped around... His genitals. His genitals with some electrodes attached to it. Wow. And he had electrocuted himself. No kidding. And f literally fried his body. Wow. What kind of, what do you do? You plug it in? Because he plugged it into an electrical socket. Oh, no. He didn't use a battery. No, you use a battery. Of course. Oh. <laughs> I know that. Everybody knows that. Sure. Of course. Sure. He was cooked. <laughs> wow. And his parents were on vacation. And what a great way to be found by the cops. <laughs> like a piece of liver wrapped around yourself. And but just imagine you're calling these people long distance. They were off somewhere having a good time. Hello, oh, yeah. we have some bad news for you. Your son is dead. Oh, my God, how did he die? Yeah, I'd like to give that explanation. Uh -huh. Well, man, uh, somehow recreate the sensation of being with a woman. <laughs> And uh, evidently, the, uh, the, I don't know, the electrical current ran through his body and killed himself. I, I would accuse the police of uh, some kind of cover-up or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to my boy? 
<laughs> you just wouldn't believe that this had happened to your child. No kid would do that. Yeah, the parents were on vacation in Florida. How do we get that magazine, Ovid? But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who thinks of these things? I'm about a step away from that. <laughs> That's what I said. I have to inform you of these things. I took home one of these. On your way. I took home one of these uh, plastic women's private parts. It was made out of rubber, actually. It was modeled after the uh, porn actress Savannah. Who I killed didn't herself. touch it. Was it rubber or yeah. was it plastic? It's rubber. And you, uh, you know, it looks like a woman's uh, private area, and you take it and... Uh, it does not. It looks like a piece of plastic. Oh, it does not. Yeah, guys, it doesn't look like it. On it. It's even had hair on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I tried it. I tell you one thing: it drives you right back to your wife. And imagine how embarrassing it would have been for you to have been found. Oh my God! Well, first of all, I locked the bedroom door. I'm 41 years old. I got completely nude so I could stare at my naked body, and then I, I'm with this thing, and I'm going, "Oh my God! Look at me! Look at me! I'm naked, and I'm like with a piece of rubber." And you're trying to decide: should I do it standing up or lying down? Yeah. <laughs> And it took me a good five minutes to figure out that you need some sort of lubricant with this thing. <laughs> man. I don't know, man. How could you have not known? That? I don't know. It, it didn't say in the instructions to do anything. <laughs> like, wouldn't it say with lubricant? I think they figured, looking at that, you'd know. No, I didn't know. That's why I got all the abrasions. <laughs> I had tons of, like, purple little abrasions. Uh, <laughs> and the rubber. You know, now I go through the paper looking for what might happen to you to try yeah. to warn you before you do it. I would try that thing with the heart. I just use it with batteries. Like you could hook this up. What do you do with the heart, though? See, I don't this get it. is the kind of thing you'd need assistance for. What do you hook the heart up to? What do you mean, what do you I hook the like heart up to? I think it's like when they jump start you, you know, when they put... You Will know, it beat clear. with the heart beat? <laughs> clear. You know? Does it make the heart move? Yes. Oh, the get heart out is of a here. muscle. Yeah, 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 it makes it throb. You know. Yeah. And where do you hook the wires to? Probably either side, right? Yeah, you put it oh on the outside God. of the heart. Jesus Christ, well, that's going a long way. I don't even think I'd contract. go that far. Makes it contract. Right? I would. I wouldn't want to be with a cow's heart. I'd rather be with rubber. <laughs> Something yeah. that had no life in it ever at all. Right. <laughs> I, just I don't know, Howard. Where do you get the cow You're heart? You're getting more and more bizarre. Out of the, the supermarket. Excuse me, like a cow heart? Or the butcher shop, I suppose. Son, what do you need that for? You uh, trying to make that into a vagina? <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to have to start putting warnings <sighs> on the sides of beef. Yeah. Everybody goes to buy one, they're going to look at them like... Hey, why would you buy a cow heart except for that? <laughs> like, what's the reason you need one? Doing a medical experiment in my house. My parents are out of town. <laughs> working on a cure for AIDS. Pretty yeah. wild story. Pretty soon you won't be able to sell these to children at a, under a certain age. <laughs> Jesus. Don't send your child to the store for meat. <laughs> How do you set up a price? Hey, Gary, the tomorrow, get me a cow heart. No, I want to no. do this in the studio. <laughs> do it. Give oh. me a cow heart. What else do you need? Batteries and what? A you know, you need the cables and you need a battery. Hey, Gary, buy me that for tomorrow. I want to see that thing pump. <laughs> I want to see if it looks like a woman. I want to see if it feels like a woman. Ugh. I'll try it. As long as I don't get fraud. <laughs> Oh, dear. I'll give it a what shot. Why not? What is the world coming to? Right? What else train Listen, transformers that can vary the current? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like it has a dial? <laughs> it's not cheating, is it? That was <laughs> with a cow heart. Depends on how much current. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like this better than my wife. It's only six volts. Honey. I would love to. Yeah, I suppose love you to. get addicted to uh, your heart. I would heart. love to. <laughs> your cow's heart. <laughs> OJ, you want a cow's heart? No. Want to try it? I would love to. You would love to. Okay. <laughs> Well, then maybe this will happen to you. With, I would uh, love to have a cow's heart. <laughs> He's uh, Italy. <laughs> a horrified widow is suing the funeral home she hired to bury her husband. Her husband was six foot nine inches. He had the heart of a cow. <laughs> and she paid $6,000 for a coffin large enough to contain him. However, when she got to the funeral home, <laughs> she looked at the coffin that they had put her husband in. Yeah. And she knew there was no way he oh. could have fit into it. Right. 
and cut off his feet. So she insisted. I bet you that they open it up. Hold it! Don't tell me the answer. Her. Anybody want to take bets? I say they cut off his feet. I think they put him in the yoga position. Oh, you don't? No, I say the feet. I'll take money on it. I, I would agree with that. Oh, okay. How much you want to bet? No, oh, you got the answer. What did they do? Chopped off his head? They cut off his head and stuck it between his legs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, where was this? In Pisa, Italy. Oh, that's why. It's in Italy. I hope it was a close guess. They had a piece of the husband in his leg. <laughs> Jesus. So, of course, she was horrified. <laughs> and now she is suing the funeral home. They said they couldn't, you know, make the arrangements for that larger coffin in right. time for the funeral. To, she cut off his feet. Yeah. Well, she cut off yeah, something. maybe she wouldn't have noticed that so much. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> they said it seemed the practical thing to do. Why don't you just nail two coffins together? <laughs> or cut holes in the bottom of the coffin and stick his feet through. Stick his yeah. feet through. Let his feet hang out of the bottom of the coffin. <laughs> so he only goes up to his knees. Yeah. Oh, goodness. There's a thought. It's a crazy, <laughs> crazy world. Absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. In other news, suicide doctor, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, has struck again. <laughs> Assisted suicide number 22. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Meanwhile, John Doe number two is still at large. I'm not going to try that joke again. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you think that they would uh, just look his name up in the phone book. How many John Doe twos could there be? I mean, there's still people haven't heard. Do you know where President Clinton is today? To the cow's heart. <laughs> yeah, he's at the supermarket buying a cow's heart. <laughs> If I had it my way, if I was the judge, no cameras, no lawyers, no jury, anything. Just a magic eight ball. Here's what I would do. I would say, <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, elephant boy eight ball, is O.J. guilty? I think I told you once before. Exactly. And that would be it. <laughs> and the case would be over. Guilty. Hang him high. Let me see. You want to know if he'll really want to ask the elephant eight yeah, ball? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Somebody got an answer over there. Elephant boy, magic eight ball. Will LT return to the New England Patriots this time? The rain in Spain for smelling <laughs> on the plane. I think I got it. That's about as clear as mud. That's about as open as an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Like black people don't count. Yeah, she's worried about Mexicans. She ain't worried about anything but the next meal. <laughs> you big liar. You mean Jackie's wife? No, no, that was my wife. All the wives on the show. It was wife. Jackie's wife. Nancy Siriani uh, Martling with, with her band all fucked up. Where are they going to be tonight? At 54 Grove Street in Greenwich Village? Greenwich Village, yeah. Big showcase for them. Uh, told them not to wear a bra. <laughs> all right, we'll be back right after these words. That's what Linda did. Yep. You see, I envy all those people who take those long hiatuses, and then yeah. you see them, and they look great. Blech. Because they've had time to do nothing but think of themselves and take care of themselves. How could you ignore what I just did? I'm just going to uh. ignore it, because I'm hoping one <laughs> day, keep if talking, I Robert. don't train. pay mammoth. attention to no. it, you'll uh. stop. I just exploded, and she's like, and uh, also... <laughs> It's become background to me. Uh, right, and you know how it, <laughs> I'm ignoring. I envy those people that really have the time to, you know, and they take these hiatuses. And they look great. And they look great. <laughs> and and I, I really think that. 
You know what? Actual <laughs> organs are going to have to come up before I notice again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, an unusual, I always read these reports on the air. This is actually from a medical journal. Mm -hmm. It deals with foreign bodies in the colon and rectum. Okay, now in emergency departments, evidently, you know, in the emergency room in hospitals, they, they have uh, an unusual occurrence every couple of uh, weeks. <clears throat> How come they don't do this episode on ER, that TV show? They should. <laughs> evidently, a guy always comes into the hospital and it's the same thing. He always has something lodged in the rectum. But he never tells. He'll say, no, he I always have a says, terrible pain. He always says it was administered in some bizarre way, never by himself, even though he, they're always lying. But I'm, what I'm saying is they don't even come in and tell you no. where the problem is. They'll come in and say, you know, I'm having a terrible abdominal right, pain. Right, right. They don't even tell you so that. So you now got to go rooting around looking for his <laughs> abdominal pain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, the first, the first case is an elderly male patient who uh, we learn eventually has a peanut butter jar lodged in his <laughs> rectum. It's actually lodged in his rectum. Uh, a peanut butter jar. And I won't even tell you what the second one is. <laughs> All right, so a 65-year-old guy goes into the emergency department of an outlying hospital complaining of lower abdominal pain. So they go, okay, something's wrong with his stomach. They examine him, they examine finally, they figure out a large empty glass jar is discovered in his rectum. The patient was transferred to the regional medical center for its extraction. So they say to the guy, look, you got a jar in your rectum. And he says, okay, I was washing my dog in the shower when I slipped and fell on a glass jar. Now, <laughs> and then it entered my rectum. <laughs> He was, <laughs> he was framed like O.J. Now, let me ask you something. Well, there's no proof that there's anything <laughs> different. He knows the jar is there. Why wouldn't he just say, look, you know, I got something back there. Because it's, just, they want, it's a guessing game. <laughs> I mean, I have an abdominal pain. There's a peanut butter jar. <laughs> oh. oh, man. And you have to wonder how long he stayed at home right. trying to fix this himself. <laughs> We're finally coming come in. So the, so the uh, doctors do a physical and radiologic examination, which shows an inverted glass jar, eight centimeters in diameter. It's a peanut butter jar. Yeah. Located uh, just beyond the uh, anal sphincter. <laughs> the glass was intact, and there was no apparent bleeding. Now, if you fell on a jar, there'd be some bleeding. Yeah. Yeah, th this, was e this was eased in. He fell perfectly on yeah. it, so there was no bleeding, and it just went right, right in. Right, All right, look. You obviously know what went on. <laughs> he probably doesn't even own a dog. Right. <laughs> Although, if you put him on trial in Harlem, he'd be innocent. <laughs> <laughs> There's no proof. It's a frame-up by the cops. <laughs> After multiple unsuccessful attempts at removal in the emergency department, the patient was taken to the operating room, given spinal anesthesia. So, in other words, he was blocked off from the waist down. Yeah. Placed in the jackknife position. The anal region was prepared and the buttocks separated with tape. <sighs> and then they used a catheter... And uh, they tried to get the jar out, but it was, the jar was so stuck in there, it had created a vacuum, a partial vacuum Could behind the jar. Be Could not be moved. <laughs> he just opened his mouth. They then put the patient in the, what is called the deep Trendelenburg position. Ooh, I don't Do you know, know that? that? One, no. All right. <laughs> what? What is that? What? The Trendelenburg? Trendelenburg. That's a position I've yet to get my wife in. <laughs> All I know is he's a Jewish guy, though. Trendelenburg. <laughs> the jar was filled with quick-setting two-inch plaster rolls packed around an Army-Navy right-angle retractor and allowed to set. Now they're packing cement. It's a science project. <laughs> Did you realize? Wait a minute. Now, understand what they're doing. Let me explain Maybe, to you. Yeah, please. They loaded up the area around the jar with cement and put, obviously, some objects in the cement. So once the cement gets hard, you could pull out the cement and maybe the object oh, would be adhered to the jar. Oh. 
So they're packing cement in it. How much room is there in there? Oh. Yeah, he could move furniture. <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> got a lot of room. Right. And I imagine now that there's a vacuum, you could pull out a few organs with this whole thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. After approximately 15 minutes, the, uh, the uh, sphincter <laughs> was retracted with right angle vaginal retractors. And gentle fingers pressure was used to massage the edematous tissue. Oh, I don't even know what this is. Yeah, you were in an area you don't need to know. <laughs> Unexplored. <laughs> if you're having your edematous material massage, <laughs> you know you're in deep trouble. <laughs> See, the guy, like, is smiling during this or what? Oh, because he's awake. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway, they say due to the massage and all of the uh, various uh, instruments put in there, uh -huh. and as well as the cement, <laughs> the jar was rotated gradually and delivered. Uh -huh. They now call it, they call it a delivery. delivery. This is like giving birth. Look, I gave birth to a jar. <laughs> Look at my baby. <laughs> By ja I'll call him Jiffy. <laughs> Do you think that they took this guy when they got him into that last position and moved him into that big arena so all the other doctors could I hope so. <laughs> you know what else I'm thinking? The guy probably didn't want the spinal <laughs> anesthesia. Oh. oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't, mm, I wonder if it's on video. <laughs> well, according to this, it was a very successful operation because uh, they examined him after the jar was removed and the cement <laughs> and the retractors. And uh, the anus showed only uh, uh, edema, Which is ecchi swelling. ecchymoses, bruising, ecchymoses. and minor abrasions. Wow. You know what ecchymoses is? Of course. Is ecchymoses. It's a e bruise. Ecchymoses. Yeah. Ecchymoses. <laughs> ecchymoses, Jeremy. <laughs> and the patient recovered fully. And after the procedure, he was discharged from the hospital the following morning. Wow. How's that for and medical science? Out, huh? Yep. Wow. Who's the guy who has so much free time that he's experimenting with a peanut jar? <laughs> peanut butter jar. You know how big that is? Oh, big. Yeah. Well, don't you remember we talked about the guy? I mean, I don't know how much I get into this, but some guy had poured cement into that area. Yeah. And it hardened and yeah. it had to be delivered. Yep. And then when they found that there was this big cement thing, but it had a ping pong ball in the middle. Yep. The ping pong yeah, ball. That all yeah, what was that all about? It was unexplained. It was right. the medical. There's a ping pong ball in the middle of the cement. Yeah. Ooh, you never knew. That was a playground. Mm. <laughs> and read Robin's book. She was in worse shape after her eighth birthday. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't laugh. Somebody should have anesthetized me. You're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, were you were you um, anesthetized from the waist down? <laughs> Let's play some ping pong, okay? <laughs> Me first. <laughs> no paddles required. We'll just use our buttocks. I'll get the cement. I'll get the cement. <laughs> just what would possess you to do that? Yes. <laughs> I'm not even going to read the second one because the first one was oh, It's amazing, enough. yes. Right. You might get back to that at some other time. Jesus. We have to absorb the information from the first. It's pretty exciting stuff. All right, I got to take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. I know I said I wouldn't read the second anal erotic story, but <laughs> you it's you just can. so good. You can't help it's it. It's just can. so good. <laughs> I'll just paraphrase you. So this 34-year-old guy comes into the emergency room, <laughs> and he's complaining, of course, of rectal and lower abdominal pain. And he tells everyone in the emergency room that he was abducted, he Before says, you start, let me just say that there's a guy out there who just faxed. And I didn't know you were going to go into the second story. Yeah. He always already said, you're going to kill him if you keep this up. All right. He okay. may never see his wife and children again. All right. Wait a second. Now, listen to this. So, they're in the emergency room. And, you know, guys can't come in and just say, hey, I got a peanut butter jar lodged in my rectum. He can't right. say that. Yeah. What is he saying? But, okay, this guy comes in, and he is complaining of abdominal pain. He says, look. I have. I was just abducted and sexually assaulted by several other men. He, you know, he says, this "Look, I was raped yeah. by aliens." <laughs> he, he goes in and he says he was raped. Abdominal examination revealed a firm mass above the umbilicus. That's way up. And digital palpitation encountered a hard plastic object at about four to five centimeters. Okay? So they do some kind of x-ray, and it shows a 
large vibrator. All right. I mean, huge vibrator. And lodged where no one could find it. By his navel. Right. Okay. Now, and you say, wow, these guys really viciously raped him and stuff, right? No free air was detected under the diaphragm, and bowel sounds and vital signs were completely normal. All right, so they, so they start trying to take this vibrator out, and they can't get it out. It's unsuccessful, every attempt. So they have to keep them overnight. they got to figure out a way to get this thing out of there. So it's still in there. Yeah, yeah they keep them overnight. Next morning, they take them into the operating room, where they finally extract this plastic foreign body without complication, and the patient under spinal anesthesia, as in the last case. He was observed for 24 hours and discharged, but here's the great thing. Subsequent police investigation determined that no abduction had occurred and that the vibrator had most likely been self-administered. And it happened. It's like a bow and arrow. What? I think he was using a bow and arrow. I don't know. But those are great stories. And doctors must be like, you know, every time a guy comes in and goes, listen, I was showering my dog. <laughs> Who showers their dog? I was showering my dog and there was a peanut butter jar <laughs> And I show. slipped. I slipped. I fell on top of it, and this thing got incredibly lodged. It would just be great if the guy came in and goes, "Look, I'm gay. I'm 65 years old. I'm I'm the I'm the perfect vision of the lonely homosexual. <laughs> you know, see, the and old homosexual. Nothing nothing sadder than old homosexual. But you're right because here the guy says he's washing his dog. So say he's telling the truth. Who yeah. gets in the tub? And then if you get in the tub, why do you, why are you naked while you're washing? Why is your a dog? peanut butter jar in the tub? <laughs> Who knows? And how do you perfectly sit on it by accident so that there's no abrasions? But the worst thing is, they know it's there. They're not going to help you out. No. I only have abdominal pain. I, I have tummy wrong. pain. I don't know what's wrong. I have tummy pain. <laughs> oh. By the way, if you find my toaster oven in there, I'll give you $100. <laughs> hey, was the vibrator still on? <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. I'm glad I'm not gay. There's just too much involved. <laughs> It's too weird, man. You so, don't hear gay women doing things like that. You know what's weird? How many other times have these guys, you know, put stuff there and retrieved it? And retrieved it, got it out. Like, how many times was the peanut butter, you know, like, it should be like, I've done this about 20 times in my life. You know, wash my dog and fell on top of the peanut butter jar. <laughs> and uh, I don't understand. I don't know why I went wrong this time. What about the other way? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did they try to get in there that they couldn't? Right. Keg of beer. <laughs> Keg of beer. <laughs> I figured they're working their way up. Yeah, right. That the, the peanut yeah. butter jar seems reasonable because I have already... I already did the watermelon. Accepted, right. you know, whatever. Do you think it's like drugs? Like every time you do something, it's not enough? You have to go to a higher, yeah, higher drug? Yeah, I think so. I think so, high. yeah. A new high. Right. It's a new challenge. <laughs> it's like the Olympics. The other day it came up that uh, there were some weird things going on in China. People are now saying that prisoners are being executed early for their organs. And that you, if you need something like a kidney or a lung, you just go over to China, plop down something like $30,000, and they'll kill a prisoner and get it for you. I think it's great. I think finally a they use for prisoners. They claim that all of these people are death row yeah. kind of prisoners, but who yeah. knows? Well, I say it's great. And then you said that they were eating fetuses over there, and I said, oh, I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, I wasn't kidding about that. I knew you thought I was kidding. And now I have an article that supports you. Aborted human fetuses intended for human consumption are being sold for as little as one pound in the Chinese city of Sichuan. Yeah, Sichuan. That's what Sichuan beef is. <laughs> Fetus. Just one beef. The Eastern Express newspaper said journalists from its sister publication East Week had gone to Szechuan across the border from Hong Kong to see if fetuses were being sold. Yeah, well, they're good for you. 
Szechuan Hospital carried out 7,000 terminations last year, including a number on Hong Kong women seeking cheap abortions. At the state-run Health Center for Women and Children, a female doctor was asked for a fetus. The next day, she handed the reporter a fist-sized glass bottle stuffed with a thumb-sized fetus. Okay. Or actually, it was a lot of thumb-sized fetuses. Right. Whole bottle of fetuses. Yeah, and what happened? <laughs> the doctor was quoted as saying, there are 10 fetuses here all aborted this morning. You can take them. Fresh fetus. We are a state hospital and don't charge. Normally, we doctors take them home and eat them all free. That was you the... don't look well, you take them. So wow. it was like sort of a humanitarian thing. She right. would have taken them home for herself. But since the reporter didn't look so hot to her, she was giving him the 10 to take for himself. Boy, that's, I wonder how you prepare that, that fetus. I will tell you. Oh, great. <laughs> Thorough research. The newspaper said the fetuses were eaten as a soup. Oh, together soup. Together with pork and ginger. <laughs> fetus soup. I don't eat pork. Well, you don't have to have the pork. Just I can just have fetus. Yeah. Maybe, what does it taste like? Chicken? I don't know. Oh, jeez. Oh, you eat chicken. You eat fetus. The doctor said the best fetuses were first, firstborn males from young women. Why are they the best? I don't know, but she did say they don't carry out abortions just to eat the fetuses. Right. But if the fetuses weren't eaten, they'd just be wasted. True. So uh, why not put them together in a soup and eat them? Do they float like a wonton? <laughs> do you keep them whole or do you chop them up? Do you eat them like, 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 like you eat the whole head? and the? Uh, yeah, do you want a whole fetus yeah. or do you want it cut up? Like is it just one fetus floating around in your soup or do you chop up the whole fetus? I don't mm. know. All I know is that another doctor was quoted as saying that the fetuses are even better than placenta. Can you see fingers and toes and stuff? I mean, when they're that old? In nutritional value. I suppose a little thumb. You could probably make out uh, detail. Because I know Kathy Lee threw her fetus down the toilet. I'm wondering if I could retrieve that and eat it. I'd be healthy. <laughs> she didn't realize it was a delicacy. Lager. I said you smell good! Dr. <laughs> Thank Wan you. Dr. Lee of the Hong Kong Nutrition Association said eating fetuses is a traditional Chinese medicine deeply founded in folklore. Really? However, the alleged properties probably have more to do with old wives' tales. Of course. Probably. Some of the doctors say that uh, when you eat fetus, it's good for your body. It'll give you smooth skin, make you younger, and it's good for your kidneys. Yeah, I saw that in a cartoon once. <laughs> and some of the uh, embryos, they say, are taken to uh, factories where they're used to produce medicines. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. No kidding. Yeah. Hey, we're filled with medical news today. First the rectum stuff and now the fetus. That's yeah. amazing. Can't imagine that. So, uh, that's you know, that's eating were, a whole. That's hey, to me. That's what eggs are. You're eating a chicken. You're eating a chicken fetus. At least it's a chicken. It's not a human. I know, but it's like an egg is a chicken fetus. According to traditional Chinese medicine, actually, if it's not fertilized, it's not a uh, a fetus. Yeah. It's just sure. half of what you would have if you were making a baby. All I know is a chicken sits on that and it turns into a baby. Yes, but it has to have been fertilized. Don't okay. you know anything about? Believe me, it was fertilized. Sex. No, no, no. According to traditional Chinese medicine, it's re it is regarded as particularly beneficial for a nursing mother to eat her own placenta. <laughs> because it's supposed to improve her milk. It also is usually drunk in the form of a soup. Oh. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, you got to be a real chooch to eat that. Oh, boy. Only a Mama Luke would eat that. In southern Florida, a woman who tips the scale at nearly 300 pounds is in jail, charged with crushing her boyfriend to death. Ah! <laughs> All right. Authorities in West Palm Beach have arrested a woman named Viola Simps or Thompson and charged her with manslaughter and negligence. She it allegedly crushed her boyfriend, Augustus Grant, to death by lying on top of him. In her first court appearance, she told the judge that she didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> but authorities aren't buying the story. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was reading in the paper today about a fat woman. She was so fat. How fat was she? <laughs> she crushed her boyfriend. 
Police say they've been called to the house more than 60 times in the last six months, most recently when she struck her boyfriend in the head with a lamp. <laughs> it happens. No, O.J. So, claims he was beaten, too. <laughs> so they figure she must have just this time decided to crush him to death with her incredible heft. Hefty girl. Yes. So we'll have to look uh, for the uh, outcome in that trial. Did you see this in the paper? Your cat may drive you crazy. I was thinking about you. You know how nutty you are? Oh, boy. Here you know? we go. Oh, I read about it in your cat? book. It's your cat. Listen to this. This is bull, though. People who keep a cat to cheer themselves up will be surprised to learn that it could make them depressed beyond their wildest thoughts. Huh. German scientists. Which, oh, Germans. Know, forget about it. All the good German scientists came over to this country anyway right, during World War II. space program. <laughs> German scientists have found a virus known to infect cats, the Bona disease virus. I have a Bona disease. <laughs> In fact, I, it, it makes me have a Bona every five minutes. <laughs> the Bona disease virus. In the Lack of Bona disease. Yeah. Bona disease virus in the blood of humans suffering with severe mental disorders, including major depression, panic attacks, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh, oh. Cats have a sickening virus that they transmit to people. It's present in almost all household cats. It's generally dormant, but it can become active at any time, experts say. Uh-huh. What's more, scientists found large amounts of the virus when patients were having severe symptoms of mental illness and far less virus when symptoms eased. Experts say that this strongly suggests the virus has a role causing depression and other mental problems. I had my problems before I got cat. That's what I said. <laughs> For the first time ever, scientists used DNA tests to verify the presence of the virus in six patients with various mental problems. <laughs> Did you have a cat growing up? <laughs> no, no. We didn't have any pets. The Bona disease virus. <laughs> this is a very, very bad disease. <laughs> it's carried by horses, sheep, and cattle, as well as cats, but little is known about how the virus might be transmitted from these animals to humans. And how do you treat it? There is no treatment. So once the cat gives it to you, you got it? They say don't let cats eat off your plate. Oh, I don't do that. Keep their litter box clean, and if you cut yourself around animals, wash the wound thoroughly. Does your cat have the virus? May be a way to tell. In Germany, they call it the crazy virus because they noticed odd behavior in animals that had it. <laughs> Who knows? It's Germany. Maybe it's just German cats. You never yeah. know. Yeah, maybe it's just German cat. Maybe Hitler had that disease. <laughs> maybe he was just bummed That's out. Right. Did Hitler have a cat? <laughs> he had several. Find out. He had several. Yeah. Oh yes, had a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Kept the cats in one part, and then him in the other. Big picture of himself. Had a giant picture of himself over the dining room. <laughs> picture him. And then he went nuts. <laughs> anyway, I read that. I thought about our cats. Thought about uh, you. Yeah. You're not feeling badly, are you? No, I'm okay. I know you're surrounded by cats <laughs> and the bone of the virus. You've been I laugh at the bone of virus. Like you laugh at all boners. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then on uh, Sunday, I had Mother's Day. How was that? Uh, pretty good. My mom was in rare form, you know. <laughs> Every time somebody says something negative at the table, yes. my mother... You know, my mother is very spiritual. You know, she's into transcendental meditation, as we all are, but but she's like, she is almost a yogi. She is, uh, she sort of acts like the minister of our little cult. <laughs> yeah, like I do transcendental meditation, and it relaxes me and stuff, you know, but mm -hmm. my mom, she thinks like she is a, an Indian guru. Mm -hmm. A pundit. Yeah, she does. She <laughs> thinks she is a guru. Because she's always lecturing. Yeah, it's weird. Like, we're at the table, and we were obsessing on different members of the family. and talk I don't want you talking this way. I go, what way, Ma? You can't control how people talk. For Christ's sake. I mean, Dad's is a man in his talk. 70s. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like it. It's negative. It's negative. <laughs> so I got into an argument with her on Mother's Day. I just said, Ma... Why don't now, you do you chill? think that's right on Mother's Day to argue with your mother? I said, Mom, when you're around other adults, your friends, 
Do you sit there and tell them what to discuss and what not to discuss? I mean, with her family, she gets control. She gets into this. She thinks she's supposed to be a mother. Mm -hmm. My sister's about forty-seven years old. <laughs> I'm about forty-eight years old. <laughs> God knows I feel it. Oh. I got kids of my own. My father's a hundred years old. I said, Mom, not going to change you guys. No, I, I said, Mom, what are you doing? What's your story? You're controlling the whole table. I don't like negativity. <laughs> so she doesn't take part in these conversations at all? No, she takes part, but she yells at everyone and starts to say, don't say that. Don't say those things. No, I was just wondering if oh, she participates please. in the negativity for a while and then realizes it, or she never gets into it. She gets into it, but she doesn't. when she does it, it's okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. The negativity. And she's uh -huh. like, you know, don't be negative. That spreads bad karma. Mm -hmm. You know, karma. karma. You know, and it's bad. In a Long Island accent. Yeah, right. It's bad. <laughs> and we should not talk like this. And everyone, like, rolls their eyes and goes, oh. Do you pick a new topic? I said, Mom, you know what? We're having fun talking about yeah. this. Doesn't mean it's going to get back to these people. They're not going to hear about it. But we just, you know, we're goofing on them. We're having a good time. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. And I don't want to hear it. And my poor father, he, he, him and my mother, the only thing they do is watch TV together. Uh -huh. That's all you can do, I guess. At that age. At that age. <laughs> what else are they And on a fixed income. So uh, my mother won't watch any negative shows. Well, what does she watch? I don't want to watch negativity. And my mother doesn't pay attention to the shows. My father comes in, and like if, if Batman or something's on TV, mm -hmm. you know, the Batman, the movie on HBO, my mother won't watch it because it's, you know, it's negative. So he has to sit and watch, like, nature shows or something with her. I don't understand it because she watched... And then she doesn't pay attention. Thelma and Louise and thought it was wonderful. That was good because <laughs> it was a woman's... Empowering moving. Yeah, so, you see, you can't figure her out. There's no rhyme or reason. Like, I gave my father a tape of Interview with the Vampire. Uh -huh. And he's all excited to watch it, but he has to wait for his mother to go out of the house. <laughs> I go, don't watch this around your mother. I call, her, I call my mother his mother. If she sees it, does he not get to watch it at all? No, no. He, what it is, he'll go into a room. She'll be in the kitchen doing something. He'll put it on the TV. They have two TVs in the house, but they have to watch the same TV. So he'll go sneak into the room and start putting it on. And then all of a sudden she'll walk in. What is this? <laughs> caught. Yeah, caught. Does she take the tape away? Does she take, no, she doesn't take it away, but it'll be like, what is this? I'm not watching this negativity. Oh. <laughs> and so there's no such thing as him saying, well, then go back downstairs. No, no, no. No. Oh. no. They have to watch together. It's my father's purgatory. <laughs> And then, because they believe a strong marriage, you should do certain things together. That's yeah. their that's their philosophy. Right. Yeah. If you're going to keep it together, when you start doing things separately, that's when it all falls apart. So even television watching could be the end of the marriage. Right. <laughs> Boy, if that marriage ended, the whole world would be in a panic. What would you do? Yeah. And then, uh, but hey, it works for them. They've been married a long time and supposedly happily. You know, so they say. My father don't look that happy. <laughs> he seems happy. And my mother doesn't look that happy. <laughs> And when the two of them are together, they don't appear to be that happy. They're always yelling at each other. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I told you to take the, the chicken cutlets out. You know, like stuff like that. She's always yelling at him, and he's yelling, I, do, I didn't like, uh, you, last year you told me not to take the chicken cutlets and put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's oh. like, my father ran a company. <laughs> and now he's yelling about chicken, chicken cutlets. cutlets. <laughs> I didn't know the chicken cutlets were in the, in the, in the trunk. You didn't tell me that. Well, when she's... Ben, I tell you every week the chicken cutlets are in the truck. <laughs> it's like... And I love you. And my old man ran a company. Do they have tender moments? Do you ever see any tender moments? Very rarely. <laughs> I haven't seen any. I don't see him grab her and start kissing her because he can't keep his hands off her. But then again, I don't see me doing that either. <laughs> Would you want to see that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Walk in and your parents are necking. Like Jackie, when your dad was, I mean, your dad had, you know, died recently, but I, would, you never saw them sitting and fondling each other, oh, did you? Police. Oh, police. Oh. Oh, oh. Never. Never. Never, ever. <laughs> so, uh. 
Although, oh, you know, oh. those, I don't think they would have done it had they wanted to, but there was no way they wanted to. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, In their I mean, day and age, you just didn't, you know. You didn't do that. Yeah. You didn't do that. But even if they did do that, I don't think they would have done it, right? There, there was, it wasn't like it was burning away at them. Yeah, it wasn't like it was, off. they weren't like Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. Oh, stop. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> so anyway. But don't you ever see him, like, you know, give her a little tweak? No, or? nothing. 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 I no think you, pecs, I think nothing. your parents have more romance. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest sign of affection is when they talk to each other in a reasonable tone. <laughs> right. Yeah, like when they're actually being reasonable. Like, Excuse me, Ben. Right. Oh, they're getting along. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. What a marriage. Wow. Yeah. I can't say my relationship is much better. My wife and I yell at each other all day. You Try and picture 20 got the years same relationship. Yeah. yeah, we do. I was yelling at her last night. I'm sitting there trying to relax. She comes in. She starts talking about the radio show. Hey, look out. And, <laughs> and so, you know, and in fact, she, for a while, she had your book in our bathroom. Uh-huh. And I made her throw, throw it down the steps. I took it and threw it down the steps. You threw my book yeah. down the steps. Oh, I just said, no. I go to the bathroom. I don't want to think about the show. <laughs> yes, I don't want to so say Robin's there. Book. So I took the book and I threw it down the steps. She goes, <laughs> that's my book. That wasn't your book. That was.